there we have a simple box. How we got there involves a few steps. I still have a little bit to do to tighten things up, but I love it when they go together like that. I'm going to cut grooves in the sides for the top and bottom to fit. So I have my table saw set up with a blade height of about a quarter inch and about an eighth of an inch space between the fence and the tip of the blade. So now I make my cuts. Now that we have the curse made in the box sides, it's time to make the tops and bottoms. So I have this piece of spalted pecan. It's attractive and it has, uh, it's already thicknessed. And then I have a, a piece of walnut to do the bottom. It's been re-sawn and I need to push it through the thickness planer so it comes down to a thickness of one quarter inch so that when it's fitted into the grooves, it will be flush with the surface of the bottom of the box. I'm going to cut the top and bottom to size and they're both sides exactly the same. I'm going to use my tape measure and put it at the one inch mark aligned as closely as I can with that miter. And then I can look over here at the other side and it measures eight and 11 sixteenths. But you remember I'm burning that first inch. So that makes seven and 11 sixteenths in length. You don't need to leave very much room for expansion and contraction in the length of the panel. You can have a fairly tight fit, but in the width of the panel you have to be more conscious of what that wood's going to do in future generations or even tomorrow morning. So you have to leave some. I'll take off an extra 30 second or so. I'll begin by jointing one edge of each of these pieces of wood. I did my jointing on this edge, even though this was the rougher edge of the stock, I wanted to keep as much of this pretty panel as possible centered within the panel. So I'm going to move the width of my fence to 5 and 11 sixteenths, which was my measurement, but I'm going to take that little 30 second there just to give myself a little bit of expansion space. Put your jointed side against the fence. Lower your blade height appropriate to the thickness of your stock. If I want to see how that panel is going to look within the perimeter of the sides of the box, I can just kind of do like this and get an idea of exactly where I want to make those cuts. I kind of like that. Make a little mark right there that will just kind of tell me where I want to cut. And then I'm going to set my stop block at 7 and 11 sixteenths. And the next thing is my mark that I made, I want to cut just on the outside of that. That mark was made on from the inside part of the box side. I'm going to sand all of the inside surfaces of this box because there won't be a better chance to do it than now. Later on after the box is assembled, I won't have that chance. All of my surfaces are pretty smooth and at this point I'm not really having to do real, very heavy sanding. So I'm going to do this with 240 grit sandpaper. So I want to particularly sand the inside of the lid. And I want to 
gonna sand the inside of the bottom. After the box is assembled, I'll be able to sand the outside portion. So at this point, all I wanna do is get a nice smooth surface on all of the insides of each and every part. So I'm gonna take the nicely sanded surface here and put it against the fence to make this cut forming a tongue all the way around the bottom. And then I'll do the same thing with the top. But first, I'm gonna make this test cut. Okay, what I'm looking for in fit is that. It's a little bit proud at the bottom, so I can do a little bit of sanding on it, but it also fits all the way down to the bottom of the groove. I'll start with the end grain first so that uh, if there's tear out from the cut, the next cut will fix it. Before I actually cut the top, I'm going to put the bottom in place just so that I can be certain that there, if there are any kind of little irregularities or things that bother me about it. But I'd like to have a chance to think about it and be aware that I'm going to have any difficulties in assembly before I actually get to that point. In this case, the gap seems a little bit too wide to me. So I can address that issue by lowering the blade slightly before the next cut. So on the bottom, that little gap won't bother me, but I might take it a little more seriously if it were on the top edge. So I'm gonna lower the blade slightly. This will actually take two steps. The first is to cut into the edge, and the second will be to cut around the perimeter from the face side. Now, again, I wanna remind you that you want to cut the end grain fur. It's very important to prevent tear out. So now the next step will be to make these cuts all the way around. So I have to lower the blade. We're set at right at a quarter inch, and I have to adjust the fence slightly. Once again, I'm gonna cut the end grain first. But that should be ready to assemble after just a little more sanding. I'm gonna sand these edges with the sanding block just to get rid of that little black marking that sometimes comes from the blade. I could use a, also use a scraper if I wanted to just to clean that up. Other than that, this box is ready to assemble. I'll take a little block of wood. This is another place where hand sanding is much more effective than trying to do it any other way. This is 220 grit sandpaper. At the very tail end of everything, I'll give everything once over with 320 grit, which is fine enough that that the naked eye would have a very difficult time seeing any of the sanding marks. I'm trying not to put pressure down on the tongue itself, which would make it a little bit thinner and, and change the fit. Before I assemble it, I'm also going to lightly chamfer this edge with the sanding block. The chamfer is just a slight 45 degree edge. And so in order to do that, I want to do it uniformly all the way around the box. So this is another time in in which counting helps. So I just, I'll count my number of strokes as I go and I try to apply this evenly so it, uh, and smoothly and hold it at a consistent angle. That was four. Okay. 
and count inside your head. And just try to apply it evenly. So that's not a real dramatic effect, but uh, it certainly um, will soften the kind of touch that you get from it. Instead of touching it and feeling a really crisp edge, and hopefully it'll be uniform all the way around. Sometimes um, the end grain and the side grain will sand differently, but um, I think this is going to work okay. These are all laid out with the outer side up, and I'm going to put tape on them. You can see how the grain matches at every corner. This is uh, just packaged tape, and uh, I prefer a heavy-duty brand rather than, a, than the cheapest stuff. I carefully turn all of them over so that I have access to the miters. And then I spread glue on each mitered surface, being careful not to get it into the saw curve where the top and bottom panel fit. And then I spread the glue with my fingers. Again, don't get glue in the saw curve. You want to leave the top and the bottom free to float and expand and contract. Now put in the top, put in the bottom, and then begin rolling the parts together to complete your box. And then tape the final corner. There we have a simple box. I still have a little bit to do to tighten things up, but I love it when they go together like that. So when it's together, you observe little areas that need just a little bit of extra pull, and the tape will supply it. You just simply put the tape where you want it, and pull it tight, stretch it out, and by adding extra layers of tape in each place as required, you build up clamping pressure. You want to make certain that things are spaced where you want them. And you can see you can move things around just by a little tapping sometimes. Position that, center it. And then I'll leave it alone for a while. This box has been glued up overnight and now I'm ready to begin taking the tape off for the next step. And so the tape has done its job. It's held all the corners in, in relationship to each other while the glue dries. And of course the glue alone would not be enough over the life of the box to, to withstand the forces of expansion and contraction from changes in humidity. So we're going to have to strengthen the corners with what are called miter keys. But now that is ready to go. All the joints are nice and clean. Now you'll find some adhesive residue from this technique that uh, is stuck on the surface of the wood, but that's really not a concern because um, before we finish the box, it still needs to be sanded. So all of the adhesive will be sanded away.